Moving down to the first section of the Meraki Insight, we're going to take a look to the first element in the monitor column, which is Web Ad Health. So if we click there, we're going to have this new view that you haven't seen before. Oh, I thought that was an error message. Says, what's, what's going on? I know that it is configured here. Oh, that scared me a little bit. So now that we have here, you still have the world map. And here in the left, you're going to have this you can call it tab, uh, slate, tiles, whatever you want to call it. So you have these options here where you can see the, the health status in the way of all information about these kind of applications. So since we're in the web app health, we're trying to take a look to the web applications that your clients or customers are going through the MX to the internet. So I just select a few. I'm going to show you how to put them, but I just select a few so we can see the traffic and I generate some traffic to see something here. So here you have the tiles. This one is for YouTube. It's the affected networks. It says the LAN. So they check the monitor, the LAN traffic from that YouTube application, the one traffic. So the traffic going from the MX to the one and the traffic going specifically to the server. So what is the difference between these two? Oh, probably there should be a, it, it happened that there is a problem in the one, but that doesn't mean that there's a problem in the server. And the same situation is there is a problem in the server, but the one is fine. So that's why you have these three elements to say where the problem lies on. And that's what they specifically Meraki inside application can help you out. The same situation is with Salesforce. It means that I'm monitoring all the traffic from my clients or my customers inside of that MX to YouTube, to Salesforce, to Microsoft Dynamics 365, to Azure, Gmail, and the other ones. So if there is not enough traffic being generated, you're going to see it like this. No data, no data, no data. And here is the option for you to configure any other web applications that you want. Here, there is a huge list. So all these are web applications for you to monitor. If you say, like say business, business management, you know that I have Salesforce here. I have all the other business management databases. Say, I know that I have Amazon, Amazon RDS. So let me try and put that in. You just check the box and then click Save. And that's going to be added to your tiles. So you can remove and add all the tiles that you want. And then you have just one place to see all of it. Something that I've seen that this is the only page that is a little bit clunky, let's say, or it's a little bit slow compared to all the other options in the dashboard. So if you see, sometimes it takes time, sometimes it doesn't even load. You saw at the beginning that it shows up uh, an error message that was not, supposed to, was not supposed to be there. So let's try to refresh. And uh, let's wait for them to load the apps. So that's what I would say. If you're going to use this one, do not try to put a lot of apps here that are not necessary, just to ensure that you have all the information that you truly need. And here now you can see the Amazon RDS. There is no data at the moment because it needs time to generate that data and you need to generate that traffic. But to take an example, let's go to YouTube. So if you go to YouTube, you're going to see this information saying that the land is good. If you click here, you're going to see all the information about the network layer score because it's going to give you a score. And the one is going to give you that score and it's going to give you as well the server of the score. So if you click here, view trends, there are going to be more granularity. You see what I mentioned it now? It says no data for this application on this network. You just leave it a page, leave it a moment, be patient, and then you're going to have all this information. So if you put it for the last, let's say the last two hours, Let's leave it a little bit. And now we have this. So with this, you're going to have some information here. It's going to give you some events. It's going to tell you the time frame that you select because you can select the last day, the last two hours, or that specific time frame to see how that worked out. So here is going to give you the performance score. What is that? That's what is called good put. So take a look to that specific message because you're going to see it around. That good put, that's very important for you to know. So if you hover the mouse over, it's going to tell you more or less what good put is. And I encourage you to go to the documentation so you can understand truly what good put is. So it's the prediction, the prediction of the maximum amount of the data that could be transmitted per flow based on network latency and loss on the one. So please take a look at that because that's very important for you if you want to study for certification or want to understand better about Meraki Insight. It's good for you to know. For the top down is 
if it's specific clients, at this moment, I just have one client, but you can just put it for particular clients that you have. If you want to see a specific server, because now since we're monitoring this YouTube uh, web application, we know that YouTube has a multiple of public IP address. So it's going to sense it, it's going to monitor, it's going to log it, and it's going to give you to this. So if you know that your application, like say Salesforce, is going to one specific public IP address, you will see just one, or you have all the different public IP address and see the health of that specific connection to that public IP address. The same with the domains, you know, that YouTube use, that's why I use YouTube in this example, because it uses a lot of public IP addresses and different domains. So you see all the different domains just for me to browse the YouTube and the uplinks. So right now I have just this uplink, which is the ISP provider and a specific VLANs you can put it. So there is a lot of granularity that you can go through. If you go scroll down, then you have from the network level. So it means I have performance in the network, the network usage and the latency in the network. So you have that information here. For the application level, it means that you have other metrics like HTTP response time. And you see the time that is that responding. And here you're going to see more granularity all these specific details when you put the line on top of what you're trying to see. The app usage, so you're going to have the one usage for that, and HTTP request rate, how many times it was per minute, unit time. So here's going to give you a good amount of time or amount of rates and metrics about the application. From the one, it means that the link that I'm taking a look at, I need to know the good put, how good is that link, the HTTP response time in that link, and the one loss, how many packet loss are we seeing, the latency on that one, and the total network usage for this specific application. So here is it's very important if you want to take a look and troubleshoot and monitor the one, this is going to give you good information. What about the LAN? Probably the LAN is the problem. So you're going to have similar metrics as the one, the good put the LAN loss, the LAN latency, and total network usage. If you have different clients, you're going to see all the clients and the score that it's going to give you, depending on all the metrics that it's going to take consideration. The available good put. So right now, the available good put for this specific device is 3.2 and the response time. All the servers, as we saw before, these are all the servers that the Meraki Insight from MX is taking a look at. So and you see the available good put. So this server is a very good one. You see 100 megabits per second. That's the best and just zero seconds. So it's just right there in my neighborhood, that server from YouTube. The domains, all the different domains, and you can see that one. So it's a very good point of view when you see, I don't know, dozens of your customers or clients saying, I'm having a problem with YouTube. And then you can come here and you can see, oh, this specific domain is having issues because you have three seconds of response time and is in this specific public IP address. And if you have third party or SaaS applications, then that you can go there and then call support and troubleshoot with them saying this specific domain that you have a public IP address is the one that is causing me the headache. And the uplinks is just have one uplinks and this is the BT Central Plus. So you have the public IP address there and then all the information about the uplinks. So that's why you, that's how you can use the web app health and then how you configure the web application here. To have all the information from your web app to troubleshoot and to monitor, have any analytics from your network. In the next video, we're going to go to One Health to see what is the difference between web app and One Health. See you in the next one.